Hi, my name's Andy and uh, today I wanted to share with you uh, some radio equipment that I've got. I think it's a little bit special, not the sort of thing you see every day. Uh, if you look at the other videos that I've made, you'll see I've put um, the uh, R1155 uh, radio out of a Lancaster bomber, or typical of that out of a Lancaster bomber, uh, on YouTube. And uh, these, this equipment uh, was designed for the SAS, uh, for Airborne uh, Operations, so it's a little bit special, it's frontline radio and it's uh, designed for Morse code or CW only. Uh, this is the receiver and this is the transmitter and um, I'll, uh, I'll power them up in a little while. Um, it's the Mark 128 and um, it's also known as the SR128 so, and that's uh, station radio 128. Um, battery powered seen a lot of pictures of these and thought they were much larger but uh, just give you some idea these two little bits of equipment go together in uh, a little pack there sometimes in a, a case or uh, a little haversack uh, you'll also hear them referred to as uh, spy radios and uh, you could imagine this uh, fitting neatly in, uh, in a little suitcase with a little battery pack and uh, a Morse key uh, requires uh, 100 foot of uh, aerial wire uh, according to the manufacturer's information um, okay I'll get some close-ups <coughs> so this is the uh, receiver so uh, gain uh, or, or volume uh, the uh, frequency select so uh, 2 megahertz to 4 megahertz and then 4 to 8 megahertz the uh, aerial connection a nice little um, sorry again a bit too close a nice little easy uh, device to uh, to take the wire lovely action on the, uh, the tuning dial uh, nice uh, nice positive action uh, there um, on off switch and the uh, power connections and uh, uh, beat frequency oscillator and uh, headphones uh, as this was a front line equipment I guess you wouldn't want a loudspeaker blaring away so uh, a man would uh, operate this uh, listening to uh, headphones turning the receiver over uh, the valves, the tuning capacitor and uh, coils etc and then turning it over again and looking at the underside of the chassis carbon resistors, capacitors And, uh, so this was designed for uh, special air services so um, this would have been uh, parachuted down with the uh, with the operator the uh, transmitter uh, is uh, crystal controlled in this case the, the crystal that's in there is dated 1943 so the crystal uh, predates the, uh, the radio I guess by uh, 20 years um, uh, the sockets for the um, crystals uh, key so that's for the Morse code key and uh, the connections uh, to uh, get uh, for power in and to uh, and this one to link uh, to the receiver uh, aerial loading coils and um, uh, the uh, receive and, and uh, transmit switch and the uh, aerial connections <coughs> okay. 
when I first looked in here, I thought that's a lot of uh, valves for uh, a little uh, transmitter, and uh, I thought these these four valves here look a little bit odd. And then I noticed that, uh, in fact, there are no connections at all uh, to the valve bases. And and what this is, of course, it's just a, a little supply of spare valves, which uh, is very thoughtful. Um, as uh, if you're using this sort of technology and you've just been dropped by air uh, there's every chance you might want a spare valve or if uh, one failed in service uh, at least the operator has got some chance of uh, being able to to fix it just turn the transmitter around uh, so the tuning coils and those spare valves there the underside of the, the transmitter um, uh, tuning capacitor or trimmer and the uh, select the switch there and then these uh, uh, lovely old coils there I haven't powered up this transmitter the, r the radio works but I haven't run the, uh, the transmitter let's say I've only got the, uh, the one crystal Okay, so there's the um, uh, the radio and the transmitter and their uh, aluminium cases. Uh, they're aluminium cases because they're designed for uh, air services and you certainly wouldn't want to be carrying around a, a, a steel box. I've uh, got the equipment uh, connected to a uh, commercial power supply. I will just... Uh, operate the key and switch that on there and switch the radio on and uh, I've got a, an aerial that's um, connected to a uh, and if you can see there's a wire that runs from the top of that little pole there up to uh, a mass that I've got at, uh, at about um, 30 foot so that's, uh, that's where we are there Now the thing with any radio is you'll only hear anything if somebody's transmitting and uh, I'm on the 80 meter band here and I uh, hope the microphone's picking it up. And there's, there's, there's no activity to speak of. Uh, so I'll come back to it later this evening when uh, when hopefully the band's open. And there is no loudspeaker with this equipment because say it's designed for a man to uh, operate covertly and um, you wouldn't want it shouting out at you. Uh, frightening people uh, off or letting people know your location so uh, I'll come back when uh, hopefully conditions are a bit better on the band okay it's a little later in the day I've um, split the headphones off so I've got one close to the camera and the other one I'm listening to and uh, hopefully the band's opened up a little bit now Okay, so uh, that's the uh, Mark 128. Uh, the transmitter uh, produces about one watt, so that's uh, they reckon that's good for 15 to 20 miles, and uh, that would have been uh, via a Morse key. And the key uh, that would originally uh, worked with this equipment was uh, a very quiet key, so that uh, uh, if I guess if you were hiding in the jungle. Uh, you wouldn't actually hear somebody uh, uh, 
tapping uh, tapping away uh, on the on the Morse key. So I hope you found that of uh, interest. Thanks for looking. I've got some other radios that uh, I will be putting on uh, YouTube at some time, but I just wanted to share that with you because. Uh, I think it's a little bit special and it's not something that you see every day. So uh, 73s and thanks for watching.